I read Creation and the Second Coming by Dr. Henry Morris, looking for one thing, not finding it, and then I came away for the most part seeing this book as a big missed opportunity. Dr. Morris, who went home to be with Jesus Christ in 2006, was a founder of the Creation Research Society and the Institute for Creation Research. As an engineer, he was known as the father of modern creation science. So I was intrigued to read a book where he connected creation to the second coming. I gave a talk where I looked at how the beginning of Genesis connects to the end of Revelation. There's a lot of depth in the beginning of our world and how it ties to the millennial kingdom and the eternal state. So I really wanted to see what Dr. Morris would do in a book where he was connecting creation to the second coming. But sadly, he didn't really do any of that. Creation and the Second Coming is what I would call a standard book on dispensational prophecy and the second coming of Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with the book, per se. I mean, I have a few issues with Dr. Morris's views in a couple of places, but I have a huge problem. That the title of this book makes you expect Dr. Morris to be using his work on creation science and connecting that to the second coming. But out of really one place in the book that I'll talk about in a moment, he doesn't really do that at all. There's actually more in this book about Saddam Hussein and his desire to rebuild Babylon than there is about creation in the first chapters of Genesis. And I was really hoping for some quality exegetical work on Genesis and to show how Genesis and a six-day understanding of creation and how the world was perfect and without death at the beginning points to what we will see in the millennial kingdom and then in the eternal state. So how Genesis sort of illuminates and helps us to better understand Revelation. But that isn't in this book. And it just seems like such a missed opportunity. And the title of the book leads you to expect, oh man, based on Dr. Morris's expertise, he's going to help us have additional insight into biblical prophecy. But Dr. Morris didn't really use that expertise in this book. So here for me is the best part of creation and the second coming, something that I would have never expected as the best part of a book following this title. And of course, it has to do with Dr. Morris's scientific background. Morris writes on how the millennial kingdom seems to fit the description of the pre-flood world. So the way that the world existed from the fall of Adam until Noah's flood. And there's a nice parallel in history to see the perfection in the Garden of Eden and then the pre-flood world and then the era of the law and having that sort of be the first half of the periods of history and then you have the era of grace, the church age, and then the millennial kingdom, and then the pre-flood world. So the eternal state ties back to the perfection of Genesis and Eden, and then the millennial kingdom will tie back to how the world was between Eden and the beginning of the Mosaic law. So one thing Mo Morris writes on is how the cataclysmic events of the tribulation, those horrific judgments of the seals and the trumpets and the bowls, are what would need to occur on earth in order to reshape it over a seven-year period of time to make the world how it was before the flood. And I've never read anyone write about how what is going on in the tribulation, those physical calamities could actually help make the world how it was before the flood. And if we want the restoration of that of our world to be like that pre-flood world where people were living hundreds and hundreds of years, you would need this kind of dramatic shift to happen during the tribulation or transitional period from the church age to the millennial kingdom. I wanted Morris to write even more on it than he did, but what he wrote was very helpful. For the most part, though, I saw creation and the second coming as kind of a letdown. 
like I said, for me, this is a standard prophecy book like so many others that were coming out in the late 80s and early 90s. So Morris does a fine job explaining how the book of Daniel relates to the end times. He does a good job focusing on how evolutionary theory aligns with the false teachings that we will see with the Antichrist and the coming of his rule in the world. And that's a good addition as well. But I think Morris could have used a lot more of his own understanding to really help us see the end times from a perspective we can't get from other authors. But really this just turned into rather a standard dispensational eschatological book that we've seen from many authors before and after Dr. Morris. Reading this, I kind of felt like I went into a time machine and I was listening to some of those guest speakers that I used to hear at my church in the early 90s as they talked about prophecy from a dispensational perspective. The one line in the book, though, that did bother me was when Morris wrote the following. Population explosion. Although much of its surface is still uninhabited, the Earth's population especially in underdeveloped countries, is outstripping food supplies, and famines are increasing. So Morris writes here about the dangers of overpopulation in the world. And I am someone who believes that population growth is a good thing. God wants us to multiply and fill the earth. And I think the world can handle billions and billions of more people than we would expect. We need to remember that the experts were saying, the population is going to be too big to feed everyone once we hit 1 billion people. And there's no way the world could sustain 2 billion people. And now we're approaching 8 billion people and we're seeing more of a rise in obesity than we are in famine. Okay, rant on overpopulation. Done. Creation and the Second Coming, though, is a fine book on prophecy. If you want to understand dispensational prophecy, this is a book where you could go to to get a basic uh, view of why dispensationalists view the end times the way that they do and how we have seen this developed throughout scripture. Um, but the book is a little dated. Morris speculating on how Saddam's work in Babylon might play into the end times clearly dates the book for most readers today. And to be frank, at the end, it just left me wanting more. I really wanted Morris to connect creation to the second coming, as it says in the title of the book, but alas, he did not. If you've enjoyed this review and you want to stay engaged in the wonderful world of Christian literature, I'd encourage you to subscribe to the Reverie's YouTube channel.